Israel's existence and the lineage of Messiah was threatened by an overwhelming militant force. Mordecai said to Esther, Perhaps you have been brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. The statement rings through the ages and challenges us even today. Shalom and welcome to our program. I'm Miles Weiss. And I'm Catherine Weiss and we want to welcome you to our program on Purim. Mm. It's read out of the book of Esther. Correct. It's all about God preserving the people. Yes. And we want to bring it to you because we know that you are more and more aware of the calendar of the Lord. Yes. These are not the biblically mandated feast. Right. The Feast of Purim. Correct. This is a feast that is really an extra biblical feast that comes as a commemoration of God's great deliverance of the Jewish people. And I am so glad that God is a covenant keeping God. He says that all Israel shall be saved in Romans 11, 26. And so we know yeah. that he's going to preserve the Jewish people. First reason, of course, is so Messiah could come. The book of Esther is all about God preserving the Jewish people against all odds. Amen. Wonderful. And I love how Mordecai says to Esther, you know, you can think that God, that, you, that you'll be safe in the palace mm. or we'll be safe in our own little palaces, right. but God is calling us to take a stand for, for the biblical views yes. of he, who He is yes. and what He's about in this day. And He's about preserving the Jewish people. Yeah. So let's go now mm. and hear some more about Purim in Israel. Purim, the Feast of Esther, takes place about 400 years before the time of Yeshua. It's at the height of the Persian Empire. The Jews are in captivity, and that empire was so large that the center of it, Shushan, where the story takes place, was the core of the place, but it reached all the way to India and all the way to Ethiopia, and it was a two million square mile empire, a tremendous land tract, a tremendous empire that was ruled by King Xerxes. And it was a time that the Israelites were allowed to return according to the decree of Cyrus, but they, many of them stayed behind because of the comfort and were unwilling to become pioneers in the land of Israel. Well, we have the same situation today where many of us in the West are reluctant to return home. Some of us prevented for different reasons, but we are unable or unwilling to return and be pioneers in the land. And so we have Jews in the diaspora all over the world. Purim is a plural word for poor. Poor means lots. And lots were cast to determine the date of the destruction of the entire Jewish people. Now we know that throughout history, Satan, Satan, Ha-Satan, the adversary, has tried to annihilate the Jewish people. Why? Because God is a covenant-keeping God. He loves the Jewish people, continues to love Israel, and also because through the Jewish people, the heroes of the faith emerge, the ones we learn from, the patriarchs and the prophets. And of course, most of all, Mashiach Yeshua came, comes through the Jewish people. So Satan is always trying to wipe us out. That is the same as is going on today. But God is the hero of the book of Esther. He is also the hero of Israel. He is Shomer Yisrael, the guardian, the one who watches over Israel, who keeps Israel. Now, the villain in the story, there are four major characters. First, there's Vashti, the queen who is deposed. Esther, the Jewish girl, is raised up as queen. And then the four main characters are Esther as a representation of the human spirit, the king as a representation of the flesh or the world, Haman, the anti-God character, and Mordecai, who represents the Holy Spirit in our story. Now, I am predisposed to like this because, of course, my Hebrew name is Mordechai, so I do have an affinity for him, but he is a real hero in this, in that he represents the work of God in actually changing the divine order of things in an entire nation. One is deposed, one is raised up, and that attempt to annihilate the Jews is reversed by God himself. The battle between Mordechai and Haman has its roots in the history of Israel. God told Moses that it was necessary for him to wipe out Amalek and all of Amalek's seed way back 1400 years before the time of Yeshua. Why? Because within Amalek was that demonic attack against the purposes of God. It's not just that God is a destructive 
person. He's a creator. He's a lover. But he knows the end from the beginning. And so the instruction to wipe out Amalek was in order to preserve the line of the Messiah. Well, it didn't work out that way. And so years later, in 1000 BC, during the time of David, Saul was commanded to wipe out Agag, also an Amalekite. He didn't do it either. And so here we have Mordechai, 400 years before the time of Yeshua, dealing with the fruit of that disobedience to God. Because the line of Amalek was still alive, they were still opposing the purposes of God. Now we have Haman, who is opposing Mordechai, opposing Esther and the purpose of God. And it is God's intention to reverse that. And there's some wonderful cultural aspects to this holiday. We have uh, the fast of Esther, the Tanit of Esther in the winter. We have the Purimspiel, which is where we tell the entire story and act it out and just play the parts of all the characters in this Bible narrative. And of course, we have some foods and some special cultural things that go on. And in our family, it was very much typecast. My youngest son was the king. My older son was Mordecai. My beautiful bride, of course, was Esther. And I would be the bad guy, Haman. And we would act out, as our children were growing up, we would act this story out in order to remember from generation to generation through the reading and the reciting of the whole Megillah, the whole scroll, that God is the secret hero. He's never mentioned my name in this book, and yet he is the real hero of the book of Esther. For insightful perspectives on Israel and Bible prophecy, ask for our free monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter. At levitt.com you can read the newsletter, watch the TV program, or visit our online store. Stay current with us on social media via Facebook and Twitter. Come with us on a tour of Israel or Petra, or a cruise to Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. As the biblical narrative of Esther unfolds, we see that the plot from Haman is to wipe out all the Jews and specifically targets Mordechai, because Mordechai is standing up as a representation of the Jews. It's interesting that both the name Esther and Mordechai are Persian names that are now revered names among the Jews. Esther's Hebrew name was actually Hadassah, which means myrtle, like the tree, but we don't really know what Mordechai's Hebrew name was because his name was given to him in Persia, and it's become a very uh, heroic and valid name among the Jewish people, but it actually is from the Persian language. It's interesting that today Iran, which is the modern version of ancient Persia, is again seeking to wipe out the Jewish people. In fact, has predicted that within several decades there will be no Israel. But I have really bad news for the mullahs. Good news for the people of Iran because they will be turning to Jesus. In fact, some count that they are turning to Jesus in greater numbers than any nation in the world. There's a kind of a race between China and Iran for the most Christianizing nation on the planet. The people of Iran will know the Lord. There's some wonderful prophecies in Jeremiah 49 about the future of Iran, Persia. But in the meantime, there's a false leadership at the top that is opposing Israel, opposing Yeshua and the work of God, but God will have his way. I remember being in a prayer meeting during ministry in Argentina, and someone was praying, oh, Israel, we pray for you because America is behind you and we need America to be there for Israel. And I stopped the prayer meeting. It was kind of a bold move, but I stopped and I talk, took the leader aside. They said, really, uh, it's up to America to decide whether she will stand with Israel because God will preserve Israel. He is Shomer Israel. So it's not that Israel needs America as much as it is that America needs to know where she stands. And that's the story of Esther. The story of Esther is about coming out of hiding and coming out of denying your roots and recognizing where you come from and where you're going. Esther comes out of hiding from her Jewish roots. She looks Persian, she appears to be Persian, but Mordechai challenges her. In fact, he says to her, Umi yodea im le'et kazot higa'at lo malchut. Who knows? But you've been brought into the kingdom 
for such a time as this. And I think that's a word for the church today. I think that's a word for all believers internationally to recognize that replacement theology is a myth and it's also a dangerous, dangerous departure from orthodoxy, from the, from the real meaning of the Bible. God is still working with Israel, will continue to work with Israel into eternity. I advise you to read Romans 9 through 11 without prejudice, without spiritualizing. Just read it for what it says and you will be amazed that it is not only the pivotal story of the Roman letter, but it is the, the most accurate and clear picture of the fact that we as international and Jewish believers need to stand with Israel as we see the day of Messiah approaching. Now throughout history, there are always these attacks against the Jewish people. It's an attack against the Word of God, the covenants of God, and the promise of Messiah. Think about this. This is my, my uh, pantheon of H's. Haman, Herod, Hitler, Hussein, Hamas, Hezbollah, all coming to try to wipe out Israel and all will fail. I think it's a, uh, an opposite of God breathing His Spirit into Avram and making him Abraham and Sarai making her Sarah, that, that hey letter, that, that breath of God comes in. Well, these people sucking out the breath of God and standing against the purposes of God, but they will fail because God is going to do what he says he's going to do. One of the beautiful aspects of the book of Esther is that on a human level, if there is a hero, it is Esther. She becomes the queen. She stands for her people. And I like to say something about women in the Bible. She's a prime example of the heroine in the Bible, but they are, she's not the only one. Think about the mothers and wives that are exalted by Scripture, Abigail and her relationship to David, Hannah as the mother of Samuel, and Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, baptizer, and Miriam, the mother of Yeshua, Mary, we say. Think about the, the teachers, Priscilla, who worked with her husband, Aquila, and they taught in the New Testament. Finance, Leaders in finance like Lydia who helped Paul in his mission. He, she partnered with him financially. The military leaders, Deborah, who was a great general, stood with the generals of Israel in ancient times. All throughout the Bible we see women elevated by God, put next to, not under, not over, but next to the men in their lives because two are better than one. Esther's story, clearly a story that illustrates the reality of the New Testament mandate that he who seeks his life shall lose it, but he who loses his life for God's sake will find it. That's Matthew 16, 25, and it's a word for the church today. <laughs> Your financial contributions to Zola Levitt Ministries enable us to bring you our weekly television series, our monthly newsletter, and our website. But you may not know that your gift of funds also makes a difference in Israel through our support of the Jerusalem Archaeology Fund, Bridges for Peace, and the Lone Soldier Fund. We welcome your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries as we serve together until the Messiah returns. Our resource this week, the series, Esther, for such a time as this, on DVD. This eight-part series presents the biblical account of the young, beautiful Jewish woman who becomes the Queen of Persia. When Esther is confronted with murderous racial hatred, she allows herself to be used by God and saves the Jewish people from genocide. Contact us for the DVD series, Esther, for such a time as this. Part of telling the whole Megillah, the whole scroll, is dressing up in the costumes that they would wear at the time. In fact, here we have Queen Esther. She's with us today. Yeah, you know, there's nothing like reenacting the story to actually get it into your being, in your mind, what happened. And Lily is our queen of the day. And, you know, we used to have Stephen as the king, and you used to play the, the bad uh, Haman. But you know what? There's nothing like Purim, right, Lily? Don't you love it? Yeah. Would you take that scepter and bring it back to the king now for us? Thank you. You know, when you have a child dressed as Esther and she's so beautiful and it's just so sweet, 
Sometimes it's easy to lose the meaning of what this holiday is about and the reality of intercession mm. and the importance of prayer and how Esther stood for Israel and how we as the church, Jew and Gentile together, right. are to stand for the purposes of God in our generation. Yeah, you know, Esther wasn't somebody that just was of a noble line. She was actually an orphan. Mm. And God, through his, his providence, brought her into the kingdom. And it, as it says in scripture, for such a time as this, she postured herself yeah. for the king and she was able to be ready when the Lord made made a request of her. And it was through Mordecai, her uncle, that said, you know, there's this, there's this edict out that Haman wants to wipe out all the Jews. Yeah. And just because you're in this royal room or just because you are part of the queen mm -hmm. you are the queen it won't mean that you will be saved so you need to take a stand and she needed to take a stand miles and i think there's something for mm -hmm. us there's a lesson for us that silence is the biggest deadliest weapon that mm. the enemy has. We have to raise our voice and we have to be the Esthers of our day, no matter what our past was. Mm. Maybe we didn't have a good past. Maybe we were an orphan, but God wants to give you the royal apparel and he wants to make you ready mm. to be the voice for his people in this time. Mm. You know, it said, it said that as she surrendered, she had to come to a place and saying, if I perish, I perish. Mm, that's right, the Hebrew, avaditi avadti. If I perish, I perish. And really, that's the stance that we need to take in these days. You know, when she took that scepter, when you saw Lily as Esther take mm. that scepter, mm -hmm. it was the royal decree that came to her that she had the authority to speak. And you have the authority as the church, right. as the living body of Yeshua. You have authority in the heavenlies and authority to speak in this world. And we need to take that authority and not forget where we come from. For the Gentile believers to remember Israel and the Jewish people, right. for all of us together to know that we represent the voice of God in our generation. Right, and that same spirit, that same Haman spirit is mm. after the Jewish people today. Mm -hmm. It is wanting to annihilate the Jewish people and the enemy of our day is again trying to get the church to be silent not mm. to take sides we don't take sides we are for all people but God wants us to stand with his Jewish people and his plan for the land and his plan for the redemption of the people itself yeah. so would you take to heart the book of Esther during this time of Purim and would you be that voice wherever you may be your voice can be loud and it can be clear or it can be a silent through a prayer or through a through a letter, whatever it might be, Miles, there would be several ways that you could take a stand for the people of Israel in this time. We believe that standing with national Israel, according to Genesis 12, 1 through 3, is valid, it's important, it's God's mandate, and we also believe in Galatians 6, 10, mm -hmm. that we're to support the body. It says in Galatians that we are to do good to all, especially those of the household of faith. Yeah. God once showed me that it's a big chuppah, right. it's a big wedding canopy under which we can take our place with our ministry and our emphasis. There are some that are supporting national Israel without the gospel and they believe that that's right. their call. There are some that are primarily declaring the gospel, that's their call. Mm -hmm. We want you to find your place under the wedding canopy. Right. For us, we want to do both. We want to support the state, support the people, but we also want to proclaim right. the goodness of Yeshua, the power of Yeshua. And it's our story, it's our testimony that He is our Mashiach. And we want you to stand with us also as we bring that forward. So during this season, remember, we are Esther in this generation. And there's something really important that we need to just hold on to is that there's so much power in prayer. You know, she called all the people to fast and pray for three days. And I know God is calling us as a nation to pray for his plan of pre preservation for the Jewish people. And I know that God himself will defend his people and show himself strong. So let's be on the Lord's side and let's stand up and take our stand these days. Amen. Sha'alu shalom Yerushalayim Sha'alu shalu shalom In the holy city of Jerusalem We will pray for peace Shalu shalom You know
You know, it's the heartbeat of this ministry to bring Israel to you, but we also love to have you come with us on our tours. You will be um, just, your heart will come alive to God's covenant keeping power and how he has kept his word, he has kept his people, and he will keep his promises to you. So please join us on our next tour. We would love, Miles and I would love to host you. Yeah. I, I never get tired of going to Israel. I'm looking forward to our next tours as well. You know, uh, there are parallels between Hanukkah and Christmas, the same time of the year. There are parallels between Purim and Halloween, believe it or not, because it's a time of dressing up, because it's a joyous celebration when people dress up in the characters of the Bible and the characters of the book of Esther. Right. And it's a fun time. It's a time to remember the goodness of God right. in preserving the Jewish people. It's a real um, celebratory time. Right. It, it's not It's not around a demonic thing no. like Halloween. It's, it's definitely around a biblical remembrance of yeah. God's deliverance. But yeah. the Jewish people in Israel mm -hmm. take it as a time to dress up either, most everybody dresses mm -hmm. up like Queen Esther or Mordecai or Haman, right? right? And they read the whole Megillah. Mm -hmm. They read the whole scroll yes. and then they act out. And anytime yes. Haman's name is mentioned, yeah. they have a, a, a grocker yeah. that, that we used to do this in our own we home. We did, and we, to make noise, to stamp out the name of Haman as if he's the, the name of Satan, same idea idea because he's a characterization of the demonic influence that wants to wipe out the Jewish people mm. still alive today. In fact, the conflict between ancient Persia and Israel we see in the book of Esther yeah. is alive well, today in Iran yeah. and Israel. Very much alive today yeah. and it's, um, it's, it's reason for us to be like Esther, the church, and mm. take our time in prayer, mm -hmm. our time in fasting. You know, for this Iran deal is, is not good for us or for Israel mm -hmm. and um, God will have his way and we just want to partner with him and yeah. we want that holy scepter to be extended to us once again to see these kind of things overturned. Yeah, the conflict with Iran is going to have a very interesting way that it plays out. You see it in Jeremiah 49, right. and uh, we're going to see that play out. There's going to be very difficult times ahead for Iran, but in the meantime, it is one of the fastest growing Christian countries in the world. Yeah. So uh, good news is ahead for Israel and for Iran. There may be tough times on the way there. So now let's go to a very special treat. We have this beautiful family in Israel, Ariel and Shayla Hyde, and their children will be singing to us about the story of Mordechai and Esther. Let's go to them now. Ariel, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. So tell us about celebrating Purim in the land or whatever's in your heart regarding this particular holiday festival. Right. Well, it's, it's a beautiful celebration of, of remembering how God orchestrates really all things together for yes. the good of those who love Him. Yes. And uh, so people in Israel really take it extreme, you know. You'll see things set up all over malls and all over the country. Yeah. Kids getting out of school, all sorts of costumes and dress up and yeah. uh, making a really big uh, party out of it. Uh, some people take it even farther and really, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they, they try to get drunk and everything. Uh, uh -huh. But uh, we as, as believers, yes. we actually use this opportunity as um, an outreach uh, tool and we invite lots of people to come. Mm -hmm. We've had events with up to 150 uh, non-believing Jewish people. And we have a play. Uh, my wife Shayla has played uh, Esther yes. a few times and I've played the king. Yes. Uh, and at the end, we, we connect it to Yeshua, to Jesus. And, mm -hmm. and for example, we say how, look, this is a story of how somebody was willing to lay down her life, if necessary, for our people. And then we tie it into the Messiah. That's fantastic. And, uh, what he's done. Yeah. And um, you know, it's really an amazing parallel as well in the story of Purim and how you see God working behind the scenes. His name isn't even mentioned. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing parallel to modern Israel. How even though we don't see a pillar of cloud you know, or maybe some people don't even know that God is working. Right. 
yet he's brought us back from the four quarters of the earth. Yeah. He's made the desert blossom. He's supernaturally protected us in spite of all of our yes. enemies uh, attacking us. Right. Uh, you know, 22 hostile nations, 670 times the land mass of Israel, and yet somehow we've still won all these, uh, all these wars, just like back then, how we orchestrated things uh, it, together. It reminds me of the first Prime Minister, David Ben-Gurion, saying, to be a realist in Israel, you have to believe in miracles. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs> The real hero of the book of Esther, who is never mentioned by name, is God Himself. We see the characters playing out different aspects of the life of God on earth, but behind the scenes, it's God Himself who is setting the characters up to come to the conclusion that we hear in Esther 4.14, Umi yodea le'it kazot higat la malchut. Who knows whether you've been brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. In the midst of the joyousness and the celebration of Purim, we see this undercurrent of a deep abiding understanding of God's covenant keeping power and his desire for us to stand for that which he loves. We had an amazing time with young Lily Pierce, the daughter of our friends, Daniel and Amber Pierce. She dressed in her finery as Queen Esther, which we love to see little girls dress as the, their favorite princess. But uh, she was able to bring to the forefront the passion that God has for His people and for the church together with His people to stand for the things that are important to Him. So let's hear from Catherine and Lily right now. Here we are in Purim and we're with Lily. Lily, you look so beautiful in your Esther costume. Tell me what you know about the book of Esther. Um, that she helped the Jews and she and got rid of Haman. Wow, because he, he had what? He had a plot against the Jews, yes. right? He wanted to see them dead. Yeah, but do you think that you might take a stand like Esther did? Yes. Yeah, me too. Might have to. That's right. Out of the mouths of babes, we might have to. Mm, wow, it's just uh, profound that someone that young can see what's emerging in the world. And because her parents have her in the Bible, she understands the connection. And living in uh -huh. Israel, of course, yeah. she understands the connection between the two. You know, that's why we always end our programs by encouraging you, please, Shalu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter, is free and full of insightful articles and news commentary from a messianic perspective. Visit Levitt.com to find our newsletter, along with current and past programs, our television schedule, and much more. Don't forget to order this week's resource by calling 1-800-WONDERS, or you can purchase it from our catalog at Levitt.com. Your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries help these organizations bless Israel. Please remember, Zola Levitt Ministries depends on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program by Zola Levitt Ministries.